Yeah. So like the today, today like uh, we are discussing regarding regression. OK, the, the agenda is to discuss about regression. And let us start with a scatter graph. What is a scatter graph? This scatter graph is nothing but a graph uh, whereby, you know, generally we take uh, one of the variables in the X axis, one of the variables in the Y axis. And we see here that there is a, a kind of some curvature find, form, like forming, correct? So what do you understand with this? So with this scatter graph, we are trying to see the correlation between two variables. OK. For example, total cost at different levels of output can be plotted. The independent variable is plotted on X axis. So where do you plot the independent variable? X axis. Yes. You plot the independent variable on X axis. And dependent variable. On Y axis. Of course, your total cost depends upon the output, correct? So output is nothing but production levels. More production, more the total cost. So this is independent variable. This is dependent variable now. Scatter graph seems to show a linear relationship. There is a, a correlation between two variables. Yes. We can estimate the line of best fit for this data and use this information to help predict the total cost at future levels of output. Fine. See, definitely if you have the equation with you or if you have a line of best fit, suppose the line in going line is going in this direction. So can you uh, predict the or estimate the total cost when the output is increased beyond this level? Can you do that or not? Hello. Yes, sir. We can do that, of course. So this is two, uh, like 200 units, 400 units, 600 units, 800 units. The graph is plotted for these many. The total cost is available like uh, 400, 800, 1600, 2000. Now can I predict that? What will now with this? Can I estimate how much will be my cost if I produce 1000 units? I can. Yes, sir. Can, of course. Yeah. Two main techniques for estimating this information are high, low, which we have already done. Linear regression. Uh, because if you want to find out the total cost, what will you do, Hamsika? You have to find out the variable cost and fixed cost. And this you have learned already from which chapter? Previous chapter. With the help of which method? High, low. Now in this chapter, we are going to use linear regression to estimate our cost. Okay. So this is a particular line whereby this is the y intercept whereby a line touches y axis. This is the slope which is always constant and I told you slope coefficient b is nothing but change in uh, like uh, y axis with respect to change in x axis. Correct now. And uh, this is b constant. This is a which is constant and x is the X is what here, uh, Amsika? X is independent variable. Are you following? Yes, the following. And Y is dependent variable. Okay, so you can make a note of this, Amsika. We'll move forward. Okay, already explained this thing, and I'll move to the linear regression. Once you can have a look through, I'll move forward immediately. Yes, sir, done, sir. So all these things are there. And uh, here y is equal to a plus bx, y is the dependent variable. So y here we are taking as cost. We will find the cost based upon uh, the independent variable, which is going to be the output. 
and this is always going to be fixed so a is nothing but the fixed cost and you know like uh, b is nothing but it represents a constant you know co variable cost per unit is always constant that multiplied with the output levels will become the total variable cost and this will always be fixed total fixed cost and total variable cost will become the total cost and then you get y correct yes yes sir variable cost total fixed cost variable cost per unit the output becomes total variable cost and total fc plus total vc is nothing but the total cost make a note of this Dancer. Linear regression. So now the thing is, we have seen the equation. Linear regression finds an equation for line of best fit mathematically. Line of best fit is nothing but all the points, whatever you plot on a graph, would lie on some line. Maximum points would lie on some line. Then this line can be termed as line of best fit okay once an equation for line of best fit has been determined forecast can be made the equation represents the trend of the data of course once you have an equation of this kind then what you can do you can estimate the future costs how this is not going to change for any output levels this is going to be fixed because this is per unit variable cost we have already seen the nature of the variable cost only this is going to change and if this is going to change, this is definitely going to change or if this is what you have, uh, like if you want to put some figures on this for future estimate and you can get the estimate for this. Okay. Now B's formula is this and uh, when you have this B's formula, so uh, like there's no need for any derivation regarding this formula. You have to just note down and when you know B, you know y is equal to a plus bx you know the b value so y minus bx can give you a value is it right yes so you get the fixed cost as well so please make a note of b and a values and uh, here uh, this is the average of y minus b into average of x okay is giving you the fixed cost just make a note of this hamsika and we will solve a question right now okay we will make a regression equation and we will try to find out our cost fine okay let's go. yes sir make a note of this. Yes, I done. So again, you have X and Y. OK, uh, these are the outputs. These are the total cost. You know this you have taken X. This you have taken Y. So what what do you need to find? See, uh, first thing is you have a task here. You have to find out the B value. 
B is gonna be sigma x y. All right. And uh, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> I'm extremely sorry. To find out B, what what do you want, Hamsika? You want sigma x y or not? Yes, sir. Sigma x y. Uh, sigma x, sigma and, and y, sigma x square, and uh, and 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 sigma x whatever you get whole square of that. That's the secondary thing. So you want sigma x, sigma y, and uh, sigma y square, and as well as sigma x square. Correct? Correct, sir. But sigma y square is not there. Sigma, sigma x square we want, okay? And also we want sigma x y as well. So already we have put them. And sigma x, sigma y multiplied, okay? But y square is also required. No? In the equation, I'm not seeing any use of y square. Sigma y square also they are finding, okay? So now this is the data and the data is very clear. You find out all the values, Hamsika. That okay, is sir. x, y, x square, y square, x, y and totals of all first. And then you have to find out the B value, Hamsika. Okay. Find out the B value. Find out the A value. I'll show you. Then we'll go for the total cost. Will you do this? Yes, I'll do it. Not seeing, huh? Okay. Yes. I'll put everything here. See, this is the data. Take a screenshot of the data. So one second. You can take on Skype only. Okay, if you're taking on phone, no problem. Once you have taken this, I'm yes, showing. Yes, I'll Yeah, I'm showing the form here. This is the form. Okay, do this.
the Amsika finished? Hello. Sir, one minute, sir. Almost done. Okay, okay. Okay, let's check the answer what you've done. You can tally this. Uh, did you get all these values, Hamsika? Yes, sir, I did. So one second, sir. I'm almost getting the equation. I'm almost done. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm getting 22,000 is equal to 28 plus 2.6x. See, you got A as 28. Yes, sir. B as 2.6. Yes, sir. Then Y is equal to A plus BX. So Y is what actually? 22. The total yes. cost, yeah. So A is what? 28 plus y is equal to a plus b 2.6 into x what is the x output they are telling you to take 22,000 units so i'll take three zeros omitted 22 correct so will i get the total cost as 85,200 so why are we omitting the three zeros they are asking like it's easy to do now if you take three zeros that's okay if you don't take even that's okay Okay, sir. You don't take three zeros and do now. It will be easy calculation. That's it. Understood? Yes, sir. Now, this is the homework for you. Okay. Okay, not homework in the sense I think they have given something to deal with. Yeah, no, no, homework, homework. It's an activity. Will you do this? Yes, I will. Okay. Now coming to reliability of regression line. So the formula applied will find a value for A and B. And hence a formula for the line, of course. The usefulness of this formula for predicting results in future depends on how strong the correlation between two variables is. That's all right. Uh, interpolation means using a line of best fit to predict a value within two extreme points of observed range. You can take the line 
and you can predict any value with any extremes. Okay, that means you can take any x value and find out y value. Extrapolation means using a line of best fit to predict the value outside two extreme points of the observed range. That means, see a range of suppose if I fix a range here. In this, you can take any values and you can find out your uh, like uh, you can take any values and you can find out the desired results. That means you can take any value of x and find out y value. Extrapolation means you are taking values beyond this range. Are you understanding? Yes, Hello? sir. So advantages and disadvantages of linear regression analysis advantages gives a definite line of best fit. Of course, uh, can be utilized for prediction for uh, prediction. And many uh, processes are linear and so uh, are well described by regression analysis. Disadvantages see only linearity can be shown. But do you think always there is there should be a linear relationship? No, there can be a curvy linear relationship also. There can be a convexity also. Non, the, I mean, say they can be non-linear relationship also. Do you think always you'll be getting only straight line graphs? No, you can get a graph of this kind. Correct. Correct, no. sir. And observations used may be a uh, typical historic data is used and patterns may change in future. Each observation observation should be independent from others. Forecasting usually involves extrapolation outside the given range of observations where working conditions and therefore cost patterns may change yeah because always you cannot take the values inside you have to also take values outside the range already done So Amsika, next topic is time series. Shall we start it afresh tomorrow? Because we have eight minutes almost. So I'm thinking to start this afresh. If I take up right now, I have to again uh, stop. Correct? Hello? Okay, okay sir. It will be better now if we start it afresh. Yes, sir. Only time series and index numbers is left over. So next class we can target both of them. Okay? So that is tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll finish. Uh, tomorrow. If I have time, I'll try to take your class tomorrow. I'm sick. Okay. I'll inform okay. you. Yes, sir. I will try. Uh, like you have holiday, it seems tomorrow, correct? Yes, sir, I do. Uh, so I will see. I will try my level best. If happens, I will try to take. And then next chapter is what? You do the activity today, okay? Yes, sir, I'll do that. Next chapter is. Uh, no, material is not. It's a forecasting. No? What's the next chapter? Achha, next chapter is about okay this one na? measures of central tendency and all okay i'll inform you in prior uh, hamsika about tomorrow's class uh, if, if time permits i'll try to take okay okay sir okay hamsika finish the activity and uh, if i take up okay let's see and uh, time is there so let's take up at least 10 minutes also no problem let's take time series see Time series, a time series is a series of figures or values recorded over time. OK, like previous year, like previous five years, you may have every year you do some activity. So what you do is you see the trend. Actually, you are recording the values and you are over the years and those values you can use for your future forecasting or analysis. Correct. Now. Some exam. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. So if you have range of values, you can forecast the future. Correct. So some examples output at a factory each day for last month. Of course, we like uh, last month's data we have every day's output we have. So with that, if we try to frame a graph of uh, like output and 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 cost, can we see that every time our output is increasing and our cost is increasing? Can we do that with the help of uh, data what we have? Correct. OK, correct. and uh, this shows what kind of trend Hamsika increasing trend, correct? Yes, sir. So if you have data, you can find out the trends now. Total cost per annum for last 10 years, monthly sales over last five years. Some of the components of time series. See in time series over a period of time, you encounter many things. One is the trend. Trend is either increasing trend or decreasing trend. Increasing trend shows a line upwards. Decreasing trend shows a line downwards. 
then you see seasonal variations see during the season uh, when uh, like you see during the christmas season there's a lot of sale of cakes in the market the cake sales immediately go up correct during the christmas season and other seasons you see a normal you see a normal see in the sense the sales are not abnormal but during the christmas season it's abnormal correct so seasonal variations yes. then cyclical variations like cycle is you start from a point and you end up at a point you what variations you see in that and then random variations random is we don't know when it can happen okay unpredictable unpredictable variations we say what we say unpredictable variations that is during floods hurricanes and nuclear war at most sudden the things uh, your sales would stop and during covid 19 at most sudden the uh, the pharmacy uh, the people who were who were having the Uh, medical shops or pharmacies were having like a huge amount of sales correct no yes so sir. we can see uh, like in time series there are some models first is additive model in that we add trends with seasonal variations with cyclical variations and with random variations when we add up all this we get time series what we get time series that means over the period of time how the data is behaving by taking into consideration all these things like what is the trend during seasons how the variations are during the uh, like uh, uh, like during a particular cycle what variations we have seen and the random irregular variations okay and uh, yeah so uh, in this particular syllabus what you are doing we are only going to study about the trend and seasonal variations so we are going to take only these two and then comes the multiplicative model uh, again that all things will be multiplied but for our syllabus we only consider this okay moving averages moving averages nothing but uh, there will be there will be a data of like odd number of years or even number of years and then what we do is we find out the averages uh, like uh, suppose the data is of 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 even suppose you have 8 years data okay so what you do is like you take four years totals and then you take four years average then again you have like uh, four years average twice correct again you take those two uh, uh, years total again you take average so this is called moving average method correct yes sir understood na yes i understood and this is a trend you can see increasing trend there's an example of moving averages hamsika you have this data and uh, we have this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 years and they are asking us to do a moving average over a period of 3 years they are asking us so what we'll do we'll take 3 3 years data 1 2 3 we'll find out the average of that correct we have this again similarly uh, we will take next 3 years like 380 460 450 450. again 460 450 470 again uh, 450 470 440 again 470 440 500 correct all the years averages we are going to do correct hamsika correct sir so moving totals of 3 years and moving averages of 3 years what was the moving total 1 2 3 0 and what was the moving average 4 1 0 so you have this they have calculated will you do that hamsika Yes, I'll do that. We can go for seasonal variation next class. At least, this, at least we have utilized our time now. That is more important. Do this. I'm waiting. Yes. Yeah. So that tomorrow index numbers we can target.
sir the uh, over a period of 3 years the first 3 years sir first 3 years then next 3 years then next 3 years okay. it goes on in that way hum okay sir yeah see you can do it as a homework as well how you take first 3 years then this 3 years then this 3 years then this three years, then this three years. You get the moving totals, correct? Hello. Correct, sir. And then you divide by three, moving average, finished. Okay, yes, sir. You have to leave one thing, one, sp one uh, like column here, one column here. So you can finish that. We'll start from seasonal variations tomorrow, Hamsika, okay? Okay, sir. And then comes the index numbers immediately. Yeah. So to, whenever next class I take, I'll finish this chapter. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, I'm safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.